Hello guys, welcome to Forensic Extract and today this topic is teeth and its medical legal importance. So today we will discuss about the basic anatomy of teeth, dentition and medical legal importance of teeth. So teeth as we all know that these are hardest part of body attached to jaw and these are going to serve as a defense mechanism or to digest food. Teeth are basically made up of crown and uh, enamel surrounding a pulp so tooth um, anatomy we will study uh, into micro anatomy and macro anatomy so first of all is macro anatomy that consists of three parts anatomical parts first is crown second one is the junction between crown and root that is cervical line or cemento enamel junction the neck region and the root so these are three macro anatomical part of tooth then the microanatomy that is uh, consists of three calcified tissues first is enamel second is dentin then third one is cementum and one soft specialized connective tissue that is pulp so this is enamel then this is second part is dentin then this is pulp which is uh, uh, opening into this foramina through this root canal and there is cementum these are uh, jaw bone and there is gum now the enamel covers dentin in the crown and the most mineralized tissue in the body that is transparent or yellowish white in color. Second one is a cementum that covers dentin in the root act as a medium for tooth attachment and dull, that is dull yellowish in color. Third one is dentin that surrounds the pulp cavity and underlying enamel and cementum is softer than enamel that is yellowish in color and finally the pulp that is soft connective tissue present in the pulp cavity contains blood vessels for nourishment and now for supply to tooth, uh, tooth sensation so these uh, are different macro and uh, micro anatomical part of tooth so now the anatomy of pulp cavity the pulp cavity consists of pulp chamber and uh, uh, and the pulp horn present in the crown also called as coronal pulp so this part is called as coronal pulp and the root canal or the radicular pulp present in the root and at the apical foramina and sometimes in axillary canal so uh, one thing is that many roots may form with more than one canal which may end in a common foramina this is commonly seen so now the peritoneum it consists of basically two soft tissues one is gingiva that is oral mucosal membrane which covers the neck of the tooth and part of alveolar bone the second one is peridontial ligament that is a strong ligament that attaches the tooth to the alveolar bone and the two hard tissues one is cementum that covers the anatomical root of the tooth the second one is alveolar bone the bone of the jaw that surrounds the root of tooth that is alveolar bone now the uh, basic human dentition so human jaw contains dental arches and quadrants we have two arches and four quadrants one is maxillary arch and another one is mandibular arch so we will divide uh, by a midline that is going through middle of the, uh, the jaw that is going to divide into right maxillary quadrant left maxillary quadrant right mandibular quadrant and left mandibular quadrant so each dental arch has a midline that divides the arches into two approximately equal right and left segment these are known as quadrants now the type and grouping of teeth as we all know that oral cavity contains four types of teeth first is uh, the incisor there are two incisors then one canine two premolars and three molars incisors and canine are considered as anterior teeth so these are considered as anterior teeth but uh, and canines uh, these uh, molar and premolar are uh, known as posterior teeth now the dentition human have two dentition first is primary dentition or deciduous that is uh, a total number of teeth are 20 10 maxillary 10 mandibular contains two incisor one canine and two molar the basic tooth formula is 212 uh, it, it contains 10 teeth in upper maxillary uh, arch and 10 teeth in mandibular arch the total 20 temporary teeth are there in jaw now the permanent dentition or secondary or adult dentition that contains total 32 teeth 
16 maxillary, 16 mandibular, and the formula is 2, 1, 2, 3. So, this is basic formula for permanent teeth. Now, the permanent molar are not preceded with any deciduous teeth. So, they may be termed as non succedaneous teeth. The permanent molars are called as succedaneous teeth. So now the difference between temporary and permanent teeth. Temporary teeth are smaller and lighter in smaller in dimension and lighter in weight as compared to permanent. Temporary teeth are china white uh, and permanent teeth are ivory white. These are uh, these central incisors are vertical, but in case of permanent, these are slightly projected forward. Neck is more constricted in case of temporary teeth, but it is less constricted in case of permanent teeth. There is a ridge between neck and the body. There is no such ridge. Root of the molar is more divergent but smaller, but it is less divergent but larger in case of permanent teeth. Replacement by permanent teeth. All the temporary teeth are uh, replaced by permanent teeth, and they are uh, permanent or permanent. They are not replaced by any teeth. Total number is 20. Total number is 32. There is no premolar in temporary teeth, and there is eight premolars and 12 molars in case of temporary. Uh, permanent teeth. Now the dentition period is primary dentition is between 6 months to 6 years then mixed dentition between 6 years to 12 years then permanent dentition between 12 years up to they uh, up to the fall. Then what is shedding it is the physiological loss of the deciduous teeth and their subsequent replacement by permanent teeth. This process is called as shedding. So, X-ray representation of uh, primary dentition is uh, between 6 months to 6 years. We have only temporary teeth. Mixed dentition, we have both temporary as well as these are permanent teeth and these are temporary teeth. Now, this orthopentogram is serving as permanent dentition after 12 years. Only permanent teeth are present in jaw. So, basically, it is uh, it was very uh, problematic earlier. Before uh, the invention of this tooth identification system for uh, representing the uh, tooth in jaw. So, uh, we have Palmer notification system that is uh, going to divide the uh, different uh, jaw in four quadrants. So, for temp uh, permanent teeth, the numbering is between uh, from 1 to 8 and from deciduous, the numbering uh, from A to E. Then we will have uh, upper right quadrant, upper left quadrant, lower right and lower left quadrant, similarly in deciduous trees. So, we will represent a simple brackets to represent four quadrant of the dentition as if you are facing the patient. This one, this one and this one and this one. The four quadrants are there or for two for maxillary and two for mandibular jaw or arch. The international numbering system or two digit system the first digit of the code is located left to uh, the side of the number indicate the quadrant this this digit is indicating quadrant uh, 1 2 3 and 4 then for uh, that is for permanent dentition for temporary dentition 5 6 7 or 8 so this digit left is showing the quadrant and digit right is showing the number and indicate the number of tooth in the quadrant uh, for temporary it is 1 2 3 and 4 for permanent it is 5 6 7 and 8 so different quadrants are there now the universal numbering system or american numbering system that is uh, for permanent it, it is between uh, from 1 to 32 and starting with the maxillary right maxillary right third molar to the mandibular right third molar starting this uh, from this to to this one and uh, uh, the numbers for uh, this uh, for permanent teeth and for uh, these letters for deciduous teeth now the medical legal importance of teeth first is uh, for age estimation then second one is personal identification third is uh, for bite mark identification then we can identify different dental specimen at the crime scene then it may be useful for diagnosis of some chronic poisoning cases so first of all age estimation can be done by aspartic acid racemization by conversion of al form to d form uh, of aspartic acid in the animal or uh, this dentin or enamel uh, that L form of aspartic acid converts into D form so we can uh, estimate the age by relative amount of that conversion or by tooth development stage that is a radiographic method based on the stage can be visualized on the dental panoramic uh, tamograph based on the tooth mineralization stage other methods are gestures and damage and stocks and boides methods so 
before proceeding we uh, have to know or uh, we uh, uh, one should know the basic process of tooth eruption so first of all there is formation of alveolar cavity between three to four months of intrauterine life then there is formation of cellular tooth germ within the alveolar bone followed by there is take it is going to take as a shape of crown then the formation of enamel and dentin then the formation of root begins so at the time of birth the rudiments of all temporary and the first permanent molar are found in the jaw so this is the basic process of tooth eruption now the age of eruption for tooth is for lower central incisor and for the age is between 6 to 8 months for upper central incisor between 7 to 9 months for upper lateral incisor it is between 9 to 10 months lower lateral incisor between 10 to 12 months for first molar the age is 12 to 40 months for canine it is between 17 to 18 months and for second molar it is between 20 to 30 months so one should remember this age of eruption so that we can estimate the age for a concerned person for permanent teeth the age is uh, for the first molar between 6 to 7 years then the, uh, for central incisor it is between 6 to 8 years for lateral incisor the age is 8 to 9 years then for first premolar the age is 9 to 11 years for second premolar the age is 10 to 12 years for canine the age is between 11 to 12 years and for second molar the age is between 12 to 14 years so this is the age eruption for uh, permanent teeth now age estimation can be done in dad and after or after 25 years by a method devised by Gustafson by using six criteria. Uh, all these six criteria are used by Gustafson for age estimation. First is adhesion, then peri, paradentosis, then secondary dentine deposition, then root resorption, transparency of root, and cement position. Now, the, this method is based on morphological or histological changes of teeth. The assigned regressive changes such as amount of occlusion, atrigen, second dentary deposition, periodontal attachment, cement opposition, root resorption, dentin, translucency. So by adding all these criteria, we will get a, a score X. And by using this formula, one can estimate the age of concerned person in years. So total score is uh, uh, we will get after adding all these six criteria and scoring is uh, 0 to 3 for 0 is no change then 1 is slight change then 2 is for obvious change and 3 is for maximum change so this is the method by which uh, we can estimate the age of a person now the third molar in age estimation the valuable indicator for in age in between 16 to 23 years when all four third molar have completely calcified the chances of individual being 18 year old is 19.3% and 95.1% for male and female respectively so uh, by using these uh, these criteria or these uh, uh, findings one can estimate age of concerned person then when only one or two uh, third molar are present in lower third molar are the best predictor of whether an individual is 18 year old or not now the individual characteristic of teeth is like size of teeth, shape, shape of the root, placement of tooth, quantity of teeth, combination of dental work done like crowns, extraction, bridges, fillings and root canals and all. So based on these individual characteristics, one can uh, be identified like these characteristics are very important in case of unidentified or unclean bodies like uh, dental crowns, dental fillings, then dental extractions and dental bridges and all. Uh, dental work that make teeth unique features of the uh, teeth denture may be there there are cases where the victim no longer had teeth and was were dentures recorder also kit for dentures so that dental appliance is very good shows for tracing back the uh, uh, the person now the different marks made by the human teeth is first is tooth marks second is arch mark and third one is bite mark mark made by the teeth either alone or in the combination with other mouth parts then typical presentation basically in the female are mostly bitten over the breast or legs during sexual attacks where male are commonly seen over the, uh, the the bites are commonly seen in male over arms and shoulders then the representative human bite is described as the elliptical or circular injury that records the special characteristic of teeth so this is a circular or elliptical injury that is going to correct uh, the, the record the specific characteristic of teeth 
so bite mark or feature of feature to analyze is type of bite mark whether it's a animal bite or human bite characteristic is position evidence of dental work wear and pattern then the color of area to estimate how long the bite has occurred old or recent bite and swab for body flood or for dna estimation now the next step is to determine which mark were made from which uh, teeth like upper for uh, front teeth make a rectangular mark and central incisor are wider than the lateral incisor the upper and lower cusp tend to leave round and oval mark in case of these um, uh, molar and premolar lower uh, lower for front teeth make a rectangular mark that are similar in width so based on these uh, these typical marks we can identify the uh, offender so uh, how how to analyze the bite marks the first is the bite marks are photographed and or a cast impression are taken the impression are traced on through a transparency and cast of the suspected teeth are taken now the final stage is comparison between suspect cast and the bite mark so we have to collect saliva blood uh, left uh, behind that can be tested for dna then dental record including x-rays can also provide useful information especially when attempting to identify a victim the bite marks can be very useful for identifying or tracing back a victim so these are different types of bite marks like these are in the form of contusion typical presentation of bite mark with the jaw and around the nipple and areola so thank you guys and please do subscribe and like and please share your valuable comments so then i can improve the quality of the videos and i can provide you the information that you need thank you thanks a lot